Welcome to another session in our educational series dealing with sonic wall appliances. Today I will be discussing how to set up a firewall policy on OS Enhanced version 5. In this scenario I'll just be letting HTTP through for a web server and IMAP through for an email server. As far as this scenario is concerned both those services are running on one physical host. To begin I'll just go ahead and log into the unit. Now regardless of if this host has a private IP address or public IP address, when dealing with the firewall rule, we only concern ourselves with the public address. The reason for that is that firewall rules are processed before NAT policies. So firewall rules allow the traffic through, NAT policies redirect the traffic. This means two things. First, when configuring a NAT policy, we do not worry about limiting services. We allow everything through because we do that limiting prior in the firewall rule. And second, we only deal with public IP addresses when dealing with firewall rules. To begin, we do have to make a couple of objects. So I'll be going down to the Network Address Objects menu and making an object for our server. Now for this scenario, the server will be a private host which will feed into a, another video dealing with NAT policies so we'll actually make two address objects here. The first will be the private address object which will be located on the LAN and utilize its private IP address. The second will be its public IP address. So we'll switch the zone assignment to WAN and give it that. When done, I'll just hit close. And then you can scroll down and see the two new address objects I've made. From there, I'm going to make a service object signifying what network services I'm going to allow through to that host. So I'll go to the Firewall Services menu. The Sonic Wall does come with many default services, as you can see. Because of this, HTTP and IMAP are already in the unit, so I'm just going to add a group. For this, I'll give it a name and select which services I want to allow through to this host. When done, I'll hit OK. I'm going to select custom services here so we can just see this group that we just made. Even if you're just opening a single service to a host, it's still a good idea to utilize this method of making a service group, which you then refer to in firewall policies, NAT policies, and anywhere else. The reason is that down the line, if you decide to add or remove services, you can just come and edit the service object. Additionally, instead of having to make multiple firewall rules for multiple services, you can make one firewall rule and just refer it to this, which represents multiple services. Now that we have all the objects made, I can go to the Firewall Access Rules menu and actually make the policy. In the matrix, I'll select from the WAN to the LAN, since the target server is on the LAN and the traffic is coming from the public IP address. Here, I'll select Add. I'm not going to concern myself with anything on the QoS or quality of service menu or the advanced menu since all the defaults here are fine. Under the general menu I just want to make sure that the action is set to allow and for the service I'll select the service object that we just made. 
the source, I'll select any, meaning anyone from the WAN zone can reach it. And for the destination, I'm going to pick the public IP address. Again, going back to the fact that the firewall rules are processed before the NAT policies. Now, in the case that you only have one public IP address, which is assigned the sonic wall, I would actually want to select WAN interface IP. This would tell the sonic wall that anything coming into the sonic wall IP address over a given port will be forwarded to that host. But in this scenario, we have a separate IP address for the server, so I'll be selecting the object we made. Allowing all users is fine, as is always having this role enabled. So all that's left to do is give it a comment. And then I'll hit OK. Now I can scroll down and see that we've allowed that traffic through. Now if the server was actually assigned a public IP address, this would be complete. But in this scenario, we're dealing with a private IP address, so there are NAT policies to worry about, which will be covered in another video. So while very self-explanatory, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to give our technical sales group a call at 866-469-9255.